In this video, we're going to take a look at the LSEQ system call. Now, the LSEQ system call generally is used to move to different locations inside of an open file. And where this works best is for files that have records of a fixed size, which happens relatively frequently. You'll see it with older programming languages. Often exports from those languages are fixed in size. Or generally, if you're working with large data sets, it could be helpful to have fixed size records to be able to maneuver to particular records very quickly. In this example here, what I have is I have a simple file that's called test.txt. And on this, I've created some fixed width records. So each of these records takes up a set amount of space. In this case, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine characters total. So if I wanted to read, say, the third record out of this file specifically, what I would have to do normally is I would have to read, you know, up until that third record and then read that third record. But with LSEQ, what we could do is we can actually move ourselves to the third record, read it, and then be done. So it's a quicker way of being able to get to a particular set of data inside of a file. Now, the way that LSEQ generally works is it takes in three arguments. It takes in a file descriptor, which we know we already have from that idea of opening a file. It takes in an offset, so the amount that we want to offset from the location that we specify. And then we have whence. Whence is basically just a word that's indicating where we're offsetting from. So there's three different options for whence. We can do a seek set, seek cur, or seek end. Seek set is going to offset by a particular amount of bytes from the start of the file. Seek cur is going to offset from the current location. And then seek end is going to offset from the end of the file itself. So those are the three ways that we can work with this uh, particular uh, system call. So let's take a look at an example of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by opening up my file. So I'm going to say int fd equals open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the argv like we did before. So argv at 1. And then o read only. So we're going to do this in read only format. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a buffer which is going to be the size of my buffer itself. So we're going to end up reading from the file at the particular location. So we're going to set up a buffer based on the buffer size. Now, the buffer size of what I want needs to match closer to the actual record that we're reading. Just that way, we're only getting the data that we need in the buffer. And the buffer is larger than it needs to be. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the buffer just big enough to fit the record that I'm trying to get plus one line at the end to be able to add in, say, a null terminator. So what that's going to give us, it's going to give us 10 as a result, since the record is nine characters, and then we have one slot that's available for the null terminator at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the file, and then we're going to say, well, if the file descriptor is not equal to negative one, right? So if it doesn't equal negative one, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to seek forward. Now, the seek or the lseek system call actually returns a value. So it actually returns back the amount of offset that occurred. So we could use that to determine you know, how much the offset actually occurred by. And generally, what we'll see with this offset is that it will return back negative 1 if there's some sort of problem with doing the actual offset itself. And we can see that here in the return value. So negative 1 is returned if an error does occur. Otherwise, it gives us the amount of offset. So what we could do is we could say seek equals lseek. I give it the file descriptor. And then the size of what I want to get is going to be equivalent to, if I take the buffer size minus one, that gives me nine, which would be a single record. And then what I could do is if I want to get to the third record, I need to take that and multiply it by the number of records that I want to skip by. So if I want to skip you know, one record, it would just be a buffer size minus one. If I want to skip two records, I'd multiply it by two. So if I put in multiply two here, that would take me to the third record. And then where do I want to offset from? Well, I want to offset from the start of the file. So in this case, that would be my first offset option, which would be seek set. So it'd be seek underscore set like this. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and read, but I only really want to read if that seek does not equal negative one, right? Otherwise, there was an error in the actual seek process, so we wouldn't want to try to read if there was any sort of error. So what I would have is I would have an s size underscore t num read, which would be equal to reading the file descriptor. The buffer is what we're reading into, and we want to read buff size minus one like this. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and print out that result. So I'm going to say printf. I'm going to print percent s, 
with a new line character, and I'll print out that buffer. And what we should get as a result of this is we should get actually the result of seeking forward by two records and reading the third one. So let's take a look at that and see if that actually works. So I have my code in here. I'm going to gcc main.c into the main binary. I'll do main test.txt. And you can see here actually it was close. It almost gave us the right result, but it's off just slightly. I think that my offset was just a little too small. I think it actually should be 11. And the reason for that, now that I'm thinking about it, is that each of these records has a new line character at the end. So they're technically actually 10 in length rather than nine. So because it's 10, we would set it one larger to 11, and that should give us the correct result. And as you can see, we do get that as a result. And as I mentioned, because there's a new line character at the end, we can actually get rid of the new line character in this printf since it's already there. And you'll see when we do that, that will get rid of the extra new line that's currently printing. And that's exactly what we get as our result. Now, just to note, inside of here, you can add in like a couple of like error sort of messages, you know, and you could you could do like a bit of a more complex error handling, but just to show like we could have like an error seeking file, something like that, and we could return back a negative one, right? And then also here we could have an else that's just like an error opening file, right? Something like this, error opening file. And then we could put in like a return negative one like this, right? Similar sort of idea. Now the last sort of detail that I want to mention here before we end off this video is about closing the file. So when this program ends, so long as the file opened successfully, we do want to try to close the file. Now closing the file will free up that file resource so that it's not taking up unnecessary memory. And generally what I'll say is that when the program ends, those file descriptors are released automatically typically. The only reason why we usually want to do this is just to have good resource management practices. If that file was uh, being used in a larger program and you know the program continued to run after the file was no longer needed, we would want to close it just to free up some memory space for us to continue running. So to do that, we could use the close system call. Close system call is nice and simple. It just takes in a file descriptor, which would be FD, and that will close the file for us. And you'll see that when I compile and run this, nothing really changes as expected, because the file closed doesn't really do anything functionality-wise next to freeing up that memory now that it's no longer needed for us. So with that, you now understand the idea of seeking through files as well as closing files. Just a few closing remarks. Of course, you can move from different locations, right? As I mentioned, you can use things like seek underscore cur to move from the current location. So as an example, if I have seek set here, if I wanted to seek from that location, Further, what I would do is I would use seek cur for the next one to seek from that existing location. And as mentioned before, you can also seek from the end. And the way that that will generally work is you would use a negative value for the offset. So if you use a negative value, you can move from the end to the beginning, whereas with a positive value, you move from beginning to end. So this is just a few other nice little remarks to make about the lseek type system call. So with that, you can now move through files a bit more openly as well as close files. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.